going to be honest with you guys. Leading up to preparing this message, I was asking God, I was just like, okay, God, like, what is it that you want to do for your sons and daughters? And because we, we stand up here as leaders and all the time, we're just like, you guys got to be the hope of the world, and you got to go out there, and you got to change lives, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. And I was like, man, God, like, they really do get that. And, and that really is something that we want you guys to go out and do. Um, but I think God wanted to make it a little bit more personal than that. And the reality is, is that sometimes um, we can be in the position where we need new hope. Not that we need to go out and be the hope for the world, but sometimes we're the ones who need the hope. Because sometimes we can go through different situations and different scenarios, and we don't know, like, how to push past some of those things. And as young men and women growing up, um, you get kind of a twofold take. You come here on a Wednesday night and you hear leaders say, be open and be real, be truthful. We got your back. You go out into the world and the world is like, be quiet. We don't want to hear your problems and issues. Just conform to the way that the world is and blend in as best as you can because no one's going to care about your feelings, right? And that's really tough. Like, that's really tough and sometimes can be really confusing especially for you guys growing up. It's just like, okay, I hear about this Jesus that I can submit all my feelings to, all my frustrations to, all these different things to, but yet I go out in the world and I start to, you know, tell my friends about a situation that was happening at home and they start making fun of me or they start calling me names because I felt emotional for a certain situation and I just don't know where to turn to at this point. But let me tell you, Um, new hope is for you. This month is for you because you can't go out and be the hope of the world if you're not with hope yourself. So where does that start? It starts with evaluating where you are. So you have to take a personal look in the mirror and say, what am I dealing with? What am I struggling with right now that I think I can't overcome? Or I think that God is not interested in fixing the thing that I'm dealing with. Let me tell you, he has interest. He has more than enough interest in the things that you're dealing with because he finds you worthy of all his time and attention. So, Here's what I want to give you guys with the word hope. We're going to break it down in an abbreviation. And that abbreviation is, if you're taking notes, is hold on, please endure. Okay? Hold on, please endure. And what what do I mean by that? What do I mean by holding on and enduring? I mean that even in the midst of our struggles and the things that we're going through, there might come a point where you think, "Mm, I can't do this anymore. Like I've tried time and time and time again to give this thing up to Jesus, and every single week it just comes back. I deal with the same scenarios. I deal with the same thoughts. I deal with the same people, and I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed, and it never changes. And God is saying, hold on, please endure. Because when he's talking about enduring something, it's mean that he's building you up and giving you enough stamina and endurance. So that way, the next time that this thing comes, your strength is built over and over and over again. So hold on. Here's one amazing thing um, that I want to talk to you guys about tonight. Um, Can we get into the scripture? Can we talk about truth tonight? Is that cool with you guys? Okay. So I want to bring up a story that happens in John, and specifically in John chapter 5. We're talking about the pool of Bethsaida, if I'm not mistaken. Um, And what happens is, let let me paint this picture for you guys. What's happening is, is that in this specific city, there is this pool called Bethsaida. And what happens is, is that every now and now and then, the pool would start to stir. 
it would start to get bubbly and it'll start to wave and stuff like that. And people's prediction of that was that an angel of the Lord was at the pool stirring the waters. And people's belief was, their hope was, that the first person they got into the waters would be healed. Right? So think about that. They were saying that there was five um, porches that surrounded this pool. And people were sitting there waiting at these porches, waiting to see this water stir up so they can be the first ones in the water. Now, here comes Jesus into this town. And he sees a man who is basically limb. He can't move. And he walks by him and he sees him laying by the pool. And Jesus asks him, basically, what's going on? What, why are you here? He goes, well, I'm waiting for the waters to stir, but the reality is I have no one that is willing to come and pick me up and put me in the waters. So time and time again, this man has been, you read in the story in John 5 that he has been like this for 38 years. Can you imagine not being able to walk for 38 years? Like mom and pops figured out you couldn't walk and they dropped you by the pool and said, maybe someday he'll be able to get in there. That doesn't leave me very hopeful. That would put me in a position because the reality is, is that I'm seeing people when this water's stirring and I'm right by it, I can't get myself up and go in the water to get healing. And he's seeing other people getting up and going in the water and getting healing. Can you imagine how that would make him feel for 38 years that he's been dealing with this? And every single time he goes to the waters, someone's there before him? Doesn't it always feel like that sometimes? That you're just so close to the miracle that you've been waiting for, and then it's gone. And you see it happen for somebody else. And that sometimes doesn't make me hopeful. Can I be honest with you guys? Sometimes I'm in a position where I need new hope. Because I'm not perfect. Perfection came and died on a cross for us. Me, I struggle. So sometimes I need new hope. Sometimes I see the water stirring and people getting there before I can get there when I need something to happen for me. So... If you read into that story, what ends up happening is, is that Jesus just looks at the man and instead of, you know, because you would think that Jesus could just call for an angel to come and stir the water as he's bringing the man into the water. And, you know, the stories that you hear about the angel stirring the water and stuff like that, you would think all that stuff would continue and come to pass. And, wow, Jesus brought him to the water. Where the, and Jesus is just like, nah, I'm way bigger than this. You don't have to hope to make it into the water. I got you. Jesus was the hope for him. So his hope, his hold on, please endure, was for the day that Jesus showed up. Because he didn't have to wait for other people. All he was doing was enduring enough to wait for Jesus. And when Jesus came, he said, hey, bud, pick up your mat and go. And homie said, hey, I'm out. And he took off. He took off running, screaming. And even the Pharisees saw him and they were just like, um, weren't you, you couldn't walk. What happened to you? And he didn't even know who it was. Can you believe that? That the, the healing that was given to him by Jesus, he didn't even know that that was Jesus. Sometimes we put ourselves in a position that we don't realize that the hope we're asking for is being given to us because we don't realize that it's Jesus giving to it to us. There was, um, we had a meeting uh, not too long ago just earlier this week, and I heard a story from one of the workers here at church. And the story goes that he was super hungry all day, okay? And 
finally, at the end of the day, he went to go get some food. And as he parked his car, ordered his food, as he parked his car to go order his food, he sees a homeless person outside of the restaurant. And instantly, inner dialogue starts happening. You know, the father starts knocking on the door and saying, you should probably give up your food. You know, and he's hungry. He hasn't eaten all day. This is real life stories. This is not written in the Bible because the reality is, is that God wants you guys, again, to have the hope yourselves first so that way you can go out and be the hope of the world. So he went ordered his food. Long story short, he went, ordered his food. As he's leaving, God's really just messing with him, and he gives up his meal for the homeless girl. Now, here's the crazy thing. She could have been hoping for that meal all day. We don't know what her thought process was like. She could have been 38 days without food at that point. And someone came along and brought new hope to that situation. Because who knows what God is going to do with that. Because he not only gave the food, but he also prayed with her. So God could have done way more in that situation than we could ever think of. So I want to give you guys this. If you're taking notes, I want to give you this quote. Common practice becomes practical purpose. Common practice becomes practical purpose. Now, what does that mean? That means that whenever we find ourselves in a situation where we think that we can't push past it, you know, it's kind of like, here's the best way to put it. It's kind of like being stuck in the middle of a hallelujah and just holding on. That's what it can feel like sometimes. Like I'm right in the middle. If I take one step to my right, I'm in my hallelujah. And if I take one step to my left, I'm just barely holding on. I'm in this place that I can't really figure things out. So we need that that new hope to boost us towards the hallelujah to show us that God is working around us and in us and for us and through us for your benefit. I want to give you guys some key scriptures. So if you're taking notes, you can write these scriptures down and then read them a little bit later on when you have an opportunity. And the first one is coming out of Isaiah 54, verse 17. And the verse goes as follows. But in the coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Meaning that it's already written in his word that anything that the enemy tries to throw against you can't succeed. Sometimes we are sitting there and we're just like, ah, oh, I can't, I can't anymore. I can't deal with this. I can't do this. And we have to put ourselves in a position and say, wait a minute. The Bible says that nothing formed against me will prosper. Okay. Okay, I got this. I can do this. Or we can take Ecclesiastes 1 uh, verse 9. And this is, It's written in the Bible. It says, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before, and nothing under the sun is truly new. Meaning that God already knows your struggles. It's not new to him. Like the thoughts that you're having to deal with are not new to him. He knew that. He knew that you would be dealing with those thoughts. The situations and frustrations that you are encountering, they're not new to him. He knew that you were encounter that. So, let's think about that. Nothing new, okay? Or we can read in 1 Timothy 4.12. It says, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. 
be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. This is Timothy, a student under one of the apostles, who we could believe, who knows how old he is at this point, but many, 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 many great names in the Bible are actually very young. David got anointed as king when he was young. Esther was a queen when she was young. All these different names. They were all young. They were all about your age or just a little bit older than you. But they were right around your age. So what does that mean for you? If you're holding on and enduring, what are you holding on and enduring for? What hope do you need God to bring to you in this season of your life? I got another one for you guys, and this one's a kicker. It's in Psalms chapter 34, verse 10. Listen to this. It says, even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. So, Father, does that mean that even sometimes when I feel at my worst, that if I just trust you, I'm not going to lack anything? If I just hold on and endure, even though I'm a little hungry, and I don't know what I'm hungry for, we're not going to take this practically. We're not going to say, I'm hungry for food. Give me some chips ahoy. No, that's not what we're getting at, okay? What we're talking about is what are we hungry for inside? What is that hunger, young lions and lionesses of the Bible? Even strong lions go hungry. Meaning that the strongest of us, the most experienced of us, and the youngest of us will sometimes experience a season of hunger. So what are you hungry for? What are you enduring for? What is it that you want God to do for you? Because I'm not expecting you to go out and be the hope of the world if God is not hope for you. He needs to be hope for you first before you can go and spread hope to your friends, to your family, to the people that surround you, to the people that you walk by. How am I supposed to go and spread hope if I'm not hopeful? And here's the thing, as I was praying before this message and in the midst of this message, um, I put myself in a position to hear from the Father. And I said, God, what is it that you want your sons and daughters to hear from you? What is it that their hearts need to hear to know that you are with them, that you see them where they are, and that you got this. And he, and he spoke. And I wrote. So I want you guys to bow your heads and close your eyes. And this is not a prayer. This is just something that the Lord has declared over you. And so this. The Lord says to those who are waiting, seeking new hope, I have reached out to your heart time and time again, and you do not see me as the Father. 
I am always by your side. But you think that he is far. Today is a new day, and you are my son and my daughter. So I speak to you now. Hold fast to your heart and have new hope in the Lord. Allow him to do new things for you. We're not talking about the miracles of others. We're talking about your miracles, your breakthrough, your victories, your peace. My love for you so, and my love for you. So let every chain of doubt be broken and let every fear of man subside. For the Lord of heaven's armies is with you and I know exactly what I'm doing. I have not given you anything that you cannot overcome, but I have given you everything as intended. So in, so in your weakness, find strength, and in your struggle, find truth. Peace be given to you as you find new hope in me, and that when you arise, you arise my son and my daughter. Be the new you full of hope everlasting, The Lord Jesus declares these things. So, Father, right now in this moment, with every eye closed and every head bowed, Father, we need you to come into this atmosphere and be new hope for us. We need you to put put us in a position That we can be loved and feel loved and know that we are worthy of it all. So, God, I thank you for your sons and your daughters that are here tonight. That have been given a glimpse of who you really are. So, God, I thank you that if in this night that you stirred their hearts and their minds to think of things in new ways, in new perspectives, that you come and you give us the ability to hold on and endure as we have new hope in you so we can be exactly where you want us to be. So, God, we break every chain. We break every chain and we ask that you watch over your sons and daughters. As we get into this time of worship, Jesus, I just ask that you meet them exactly where they're at. That whatever situation or whatever struggle or whatever thing that is plaguing them or hurting them or a situation that they can think of that they want you to step into and be the hope of that situation. Jesus, we can't be hopeful for the world if if we're not hopeful for ourselves. So we thank you. We praise you and we give you all glory and honor. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.